Hope you're having an amazing day so far. Today we got some patch notes for the PTB. It's supposed to be releasing tomorrow, and supposedly we're supposed to be getting a new survivor with that. Something's coming. Happy New Year! Our team is back in action. We've got a doozy of a developer update in store for you today. In this edition, we'll be covering everything become, coming to Dead by Daylight and our first major update of the year from various killer perk and map updates and more. We've been busy, so buckle up. It's a long one. All right. Generators. Kicking things off. No pun intended. Of course it wasn't. We have a few updates to generators. More specifically, these generators target. These changes target how generators are damaged by killers and how their regression can be stopped by survivors. The goal with this update is to bring an end to an excessively long matches, 3 gen scenarios in particular, and at the same time improve the killer's ability to damage generators. 3 gen scenarios are those where this killer aims to defend 3 generators that are close by in particular and does not participate in normal gameplay, not chasing survivors, etc. In this instance, survivors are not able to make any meaningful progress with those generators. Going forward, each generator can only suffer a maximum of 8 generator regression revenge. I know I had a generator, it's okay. Where a regression event is at any time the killer or their perks removes at least 2.5% of generators progression. Progression in an instant. An indicator will show if the killer, gener killer generator can no longer be damaged. In the overwhelming majority of the game, this will not come into play. However, in scenarios where the killer is defending instead of generators and refusing to chase survivors, there will eventually come a point where they can no longer damage the generator, helping bring an end to excessively long games. Now, the issue that I have with this situation, uh, where it says right here, uh, in scenarios where the killer is defending a set of generator generators and refusing to chase survivors, they will eventually come to a point where they can no longer damage the generator, helping bring the end to an excessively long, excessively long games. Now I know this, this you can't really fix one of these things without fixing the other. In those situations to where the survivor themselves put them into their into a three gen scenario, this is a nerf to killer. Either way, I, let me rephrase that. Either way, this changes the nerf to killer. That's fine. Three gens need to be gone a long time ago. But I do wish there was a way to like have it both ways for the killer to be able to, hey, they put themselves in the situation. This ain't my fault. Because sometimes you get those survivors that do it. But it's like I said, it's kind of hard. I technically, honestly, even impossible to, for the game to dif differentiate between the two of those uh, outcomes. So, yeah. I'm happy it's getting fixed. So let's read on and see how they're going to do it. At the same time, we want to address a frustration point for killers as well. Survivors work on a generator briefly to stop it from regressing, i.e. gen tapping for a short time. For sure, I'm sorry. Given that the number of regression events is now limited, stopping a generator from regressing is more meaningful than ever. To prevent the survivor from tapping a generator to negate one of those regression events, we've made two changes. The base damage for kicking a generator has been upgraded to 5%, and at least 5% of the generator's total charges must be repaired to stop regression. Regression. Otherwise, it will be given. Otherwise, it will begin regressing again when the survivor stops repairing. So, I'm okay with this. Honestly, this would have been a big deal if we had to worry about them not changing this. Cause I can guarantee you're gonna get those new players who are like, who kick a gen, right? They kick a gen, and then the survivor's really good at stealthing. Everyone has been everyone has been in a situation where you kick a gen, the survivor is really good at stealthy, you turn around for two seconds, they tap the gen, hide again, and you turn back around, and the gen's not regressing no more. <laughs> so that's just one of your regression events just gone. So I'm glad that they decided to do something about this. I'm gonna try to play the VTB tomorrow. I'll be streaming that below twitch.tv slash it's ghost world. And I'm gonna try and check it out. 5% is pretty much equal to about five seconds, it's usually about a second per charge um so this could be cool but it could also be a bit too long but honestly and you're in a situation to where you can't really do five seconds of a gen should you really be doing that generator anyway unless just in those situations to when the killer kicks the gen they kick the gen and then right after that you have to go do something you're at 94 percent of the gen and you have another killer another survivor that's across the map on a hook and you're trying to figure out what to do do you sit on the gen for five seconds so that it doesn't regress anymore while you're gone or do you go get the save <laughs> it's in one of the situations to where you can't just run up to the gen tap it and then go get the save in a situation like that you gotta like kind of depend on your teammate and i guess so it promotes more team we're working together with a team, but in those situations where you have to choose or stopping the gen from regressing by sitting on it for five seconds or going to get the save, it's going to be a situation to where they got to kind of 
tinker with this time they want to be i'm tempted to say maybe three seconds would be fine but we'll see like i said play the this will help ensure that the killer always gets some value for kicking a generator and encourage the survivors to think twice before attempting to stop the regression fov settings is shadowborn permanently locked into one of your perk slots well that's about to change thanks to the new first person field of view slider fov Starting with this update, killers in first person will be able to adjust their FOV to something they're more comfortable with, ranging from 87 degrees to current default to 103 degrees to current maximum with Shadowborn. Perks with which author your FOV, aka Shadowborn and Monitor and Abuse, will also need to be adjusted. We cover exactly how those perks are changing later in the post. Bear in mind this option only applies to the first person field of view and therefore will not affect survivors. Since survivors play the game in third person perspective, a wider field of view could add an already advantage add already can add to the already advanced advantageous camera review that is true initially this feature will be accessible through the beta tab program okay i want to ask y'all for the people who don't use shadowborn and minor abuse consistently do you guys see yourself adding uh moving at the fov up because i feel like i've been playing this game for so long the thought of increasing my fov even though the ability is there um kind of feels like it might make me play worse and i know i might gain more information in the future but if this is anything if this is just increasing the maximum amount you could be too shadowborn does this also mean that like shadowborn you're going to be easier to flashlight save as well we don't know so we'll see moving forward oh god thank the lord for some onrio changes the onrio a few months ago we released a major update to the update to the onrio Though some players were pleased with the changes more, many longtime Oreo mains felt that their gameplay had changed too much from the killer they once loved. In this update, we want to revisit Sadako once more to find a middle ground which better appeals to all her players, old and new. Condemned. In the last update, Condemned would spread to all survivors who were not holding a tape whenever Sadako projected to a TV. This allowed her to spread her curse more often, but many felt that this favored teleporting as soon as possible rather than strategically during chase. We have a few more changes in mind to restore this gameplay while keeping Condemned more prominent. Boys, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I read this. I, I skimmed through this before I went to work. This is some... Sadako might be just as strong. I ain't gonna lie. We gonna see though. We gonna see. When the only teleport teleports survivors within 16 meters of a power TV will receive a stack of Condemned. The teleport cooldown has been removed, allowing her to teleport more frequently, and when a survivor is hooked, their current condemned progress becomes locked in, preventing it from being removed. Now I'm going to read this whole thing before I get my thoughts, and you should too, but I know what you're thinking now, and I'm also thinking it too. <laughs> uh, curse tapes. We have also reviewed the curse tapes working, cur cur how curse tape curse tapes. We have also reviewed the way curse tapes work to bring them back into some of their fondly remembered behavior. Curse tapes no longer protect survivors from gaining condemned. Curse tapes are no longer destroyed or inflicted or inflict condemned when a survivor is hit. The curse tapes can only be deposited in the further TV where they were picked up from. Okay. This will once again force survivors to spend some time crossing the map in order to delay the curse. Demanifested. The previous updates made it so the Onryo couldn't start a chase while demanif demanifested. This had a side effect of making it very obvious when she demanifested in the middle of a chase, allowing survivors to anticipate, anticipate it and play around it. The Onryo can now chase survivors while demanifested. Additionally, many pointed out that the Onryo changed its add-ons, Ryko's Watch, which was very fun to use. Rather than add the effect back to the add-on, we instead incorporated it into her base kit to make the add-on feel less essential. The duration of invisibility while demanifested has been increased to 1.2 instead of 1 second. With all these changes in mind, we've reviewed a handful of the Unreal's add-ons in which either no longer had the purpose or promoted strongly disliked playstyles. Okay, so some quick thoughts about these changes. Basically, for you guys who didn't know, uh, a while back when these changes first came through, like, I'd say 75% of the killers you faced was Unreal, and the reason was, at the minimum, one person dead three people if they didn't know how to play against it because more often than not at least one person in the party know how to play against it if you, you people who play dvd realize that if you get one survivor dead early in the game the game is over that's why when you get those killers or survivors who dc as soon as the game starts or kill themselves as soon as the game starts most people give up because there's literally no purpose because you're gonna lose 
so that's why the ability to be able to kill basically more of your survivor extremely quick so there's not that much time to get anything else done and b ton of them kill them and get them out of the game they have ch basically changed this to where you used to be able to do it by teleporting consistently to get people stacks and the way survivors countered it is by holding a tape because like they said before whenever you teleported to a tv beforehand you would get a quarter of a stack or three quarters of a stack 0.7 now they make it so no matter where you teleport it, unless you're in 16 meters within a TV, you only get one stack, which is how it is now, but they're getting rid of the whole 0.75 of a stack. So that's great. Essentially, these changes have made it so she has changed her lethality for game slowdown, <laughs> which is what she was originally. Now she can. You have to go to the farthest TV that's no longer what you were at on. It's cooled down for teleport has been removed so she can now use teleport and chase it even more consistently and the more ex extreme one is when a survivor is hooked their current condemned progress becomes locked in preventing it from being removed now she's got this perfect balance of lethality and game slowdown and we gonna have to see we gonna see some oreos on the ptb i'm probably gonna play some oreo on the ptb i have never played oreo on the ptb we're gonna see like i said She's got this little bit of balance of lethality because you're going to get those people that want to stick to gens and do those gens. Their stacks are going to stack up and because they're sticking to those gens, they're eventually going to get chased. And once those stacks get locked in because they get hooked, you can't go back. So I'm assuming you're going to have those gen jockey. Gen, I'm going to call it right now. Gen jockey Janes as I play Jane. <laughs> the gen jockey Janes on the gen sitting there with like five or six stacks. They initially get chased to get hooked. Now they're stuck at five stacks that can't be removed no matter how many tapes they do that's dangerous that's a weak link that you can follow anyway these are some cool changes i'm glad i see hillbilly next let's go please give my boy some love the hillbilly uh oh watch out survivors it looks like someone unwrapped a brand new chainsaw it's the hillbilly's turn for an update thank the lord the controversial overheat mechanic is no more overdrive is the new talk of the town as the hillbilly uses this chainsaw it will generate heat just like before when the heat meter is full not only will it continue to be able to be used but this chainsaw will kick into overdrive and gain the following effects for the next 20 seconds chainsaw charge speed is increased by five percent hit his chainsaw sprint speed has been increased by 13 meters a second okay and chainsaw sprint cooldown has been reduced by 10 percent the short version heat is good now <laughs> Cleaning up, at the same time, we've made some general improvements to the Hillbilly's kit and smoothed out some of the rougher edges. The base chainsaw sprint speed has been increased to by 10%, reduced the size of chainsaw collision detection to make chainsaw sprints more maneuverable and matched with high destiny tiles. Great, cause y'all be wondering, I don't know if you guys realize, there's this one branch on the side of a tile on Eerie of Crows that somehow, some way ruins your chainsaw. Now you could be flying across the map and branch I'm like, are you kidding me? I have a chainsaw. You told me you couldn't cut through this branch. Anyway, this is a good, well, this could be a good and a bad one, depending on people. Camera sensitivity is no longer incorrectly tied to controller sensitivity setting while using a mouse and keyboard. Chainsaw controls are now equal to 100% sensitivity before. Okay. So they basically, oh no, this is actually pretty much a really good change because they say, hey guys, um, we're going to get rid of this opportunity. So it's not only a benefit for a mouse and keyboard, but we're going to make it for everybody now. So that's good. Last but not least, certainly, last but certainly not least, we have added, done an add-on pass in the hillbilly with these changes in mind. This blog post isn't long enough, so keep an eye on the patch notes when the PTB goes live for more details. The blight add-ons. Actually, before I start this, behavior, please, for everything above, give this man, Billy, some good add-ons. In my opinion, I think Billy has some of the worst add-ons in the game. Not even. Okay, that's not true. Cause Billy's got, he's got the engravings. Okay, second best. Cause worst is definitely Pyramid Head, but he does have some par terrible add-ons. So please give us some good ones. The Blight one, speaking of somebody with good add-ons that need to be nerfed. Next up, we have changes in store for a handful of Blight add-ons. Blighted, Blighted Crow and Blighted Rat. These add-ons are fairly strong and making it far more difficult to get out of the way of the rushes in time. We have reduced the rush speed bonus of these add-ons to two and 3% respectively, was four and six. Good. Adrenaline vial. This add-on has a lot going on, making it a jack of all trades. To simply, to simply, look. I'm assuming they meant to simplify it. To simplify it and bring it closer in line with the other options, we're removing the following effects. 
no longer decreases time to recharge rush tokens by one second no longer increases rush speed by 10 percent this add-on now does the following these effects are unchanged increase maximum rush tokens by two percent increase maximum rush to look rush and look angles by 20 degrees and decreases rush turn rate by 55 percent good alchemist ring thank the heavens they finally did something to this goddamn add-on this one you probably aren't surprised to see on this list Restoring rush tokens on hand is incredibly powerful, so we've reworked this add-on entirely. Increased rush duration by 20% for each consecutive rush. That's good. So basically, if I'm reading this correctly and understanding it, every time you rush, it gets 20% longer. So your longest, your last rush is going to be extremely long. So compound 33, reducing the survivor's movement speed acting very similarly to increasing the blight's rush speed. We've decided the best course of action to give this add-on a new effect. Okay. Each consecutive, each consecutive rush, which is longer than four meters, increases the turn rate by 3%. Nobody's going to use this. But that's, okay, I'd, I'd rather have a useless add-on on this dude. A useless add-on on Blight than an incredibly good one. So that's fine. Iridescent Blight Tag. This add-on can be extremely powerful in the right hands, and it promotes the awkward gameplay of repeatedly slamming against walls to take advantage of the last rush. We're given, where you've given this add-on a brand new effect as well. Enables rushes to be performed without spending tokens. Rushes bon rush bonuses are capped after three consecutive rushes. Blighted corruption goes on cooldown for 20 seconds after a successful lethal rush attack. Okay, so you can basically use your, use your rushes without having a token. Okay. Perk updates. I got some words to say about this one. Save the best for last. This perk indirectly became stronger when the successful basic attack cooldown was reduced some time ago. Certain killers can also circumvent the downside by using those special attacks to injure the obsession. To tone it down and make it consistent across all killers, we've made the following changes. Each token grants now a stackable bonus of 44% decreased successful basic attack cooldown was five, and two tokens are lost when the obsession loses the health state by any means. This is dumb. Behavior, this is bad. And I'm going to tell you why this is bad. You're going to get those survivors who already run these perks for the people buckle up and, and plot twist. And they're going to even use it now. Specific, specifically sometimes for not even for the benefit of them. Well, technically is the benefit of them. Just to lose stacks on the killer. Granted, you're going to be running this build. You might not be the obsession. Who knows? If you're running for the people, you're definitely going to be the obsession, actually. Because it actually increases your chance to be the obsession. If I'm remembering correctly. They need to change this, like they said before. Certain killers can also circumvent the downside to using their special attacks to injure their obsession. Just add special attacks. Just make it so that if you injure the injure the obsession with your special attack or basic attack, it still takes a stack. And then boom, problem solved. Just make it to where it's only using special attacks and primary attacks. Because Trapper, someone who already uses Sage Best Blast, is a prime example. Say you're in the middle of a chase, not even worrying about the obsession. Doing your just to avoid her so you can use the perk to the best of his ability. She steps in a trap, she loses a health state because she stepped in a trap, and then boom, bam, bop, you lost two stacks. That's dumb. <laughs> That's not my fault she stepped in the trap. I should be rewarded because she stepped in my trap, not freaking, you know what I mean, not lose stuff because of it. Grim Embrace. Grim Embrace blocks generators for a substantial duration. However, it only activates once and requires the killer to hook survivors or hook every survivor once. It can be a little inconsistent and hard to activate. Therefore, we're adding a secondary effect on top of the existing effect. Now, guys, I want you to, I'm going to read this to you and I want you to explain to me what you thought this meant when I read it to you the first time in the comments below, okay? The first time a survivor is hooked, all generators are blocked for 12 seconds once the killer removes at least 16 meters from the hook. When I read this for the first time in my brain, I thought that this meant that four times throughout the match, well, three times for the first time for it to be three, 12 seconds. And the last time it will be 70 seconds. That's what it is. So this way in my mind, I thought that three times throughout the match, whenever you hook a survivor for the first time, it, the gens will be blocked for 12 seconds. I was watching Ox's stream before I went to work. And he said, because it's worded as a survivor, not each survivor, it's once. So that sounds better, but we will see in the PTV because everyone knows that behavior be doing, they, be, so they work something one way and then it work the complete opposite. So we'll see. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your work uh, ghost here in post as I'm editing this video for it to be ready to post in the morning for the PTV goes out. 
I was scrolling through YouTube, about to watch a video, chill out for the rest of the night, the video's done editing. And I was like, let me go rewatch Ox's video about the passion notes, because I didn't get to watch the full thing. And it was funny because this whole newscasting thing they recorded. If you guys haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it. I read the comments. I usually like to read the comments towards the video. And he put the pinned comment says that they changed the the wording of groom embrace to where it says each survivor and i was like there's no way there's literally no way so i go and check and for sure here it is the first time each survivor is hooked all generators are blocked for 12 seconds once the killer moves at least 16 meters away from the gen now <laughs> this is going to be an issue and i doubt there's no way they let this get off ptb to go to live service because if you do this is going to be a problem because he's telling me for the first three hooks on top of it because you got to remember this is on top of the regular effect like right here it's a secondary effect on top of the existing effect so the first three survivors you hook you get 12 seconds of blocking the gen all gen all gens on the map you block them for 12 seconds after you move away from the hook so the first three seconds great slow down the fourth person you hook whoever it is Gen, all the gens on the map get blocked for I think it I think it's 70 seconds. I don't have time to check right now, but if it is, correct me in the comments. But this is crazy. There's no way they thought this was a good idea. All of us knew this was gonna be a good idea, and they went ahead and confirmed it. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you guys have a good one. I gotta get back to editing this and post. Back to you, Ghost. This will ensure the killer is always able to get some value out of the perk, even if the last elusive survivor manages to evade them and reward the killer who switches targets. Okay. Quick gamut, they must use this perk in the game. This perk grants other survivors a repair boost whenever they're being chased nearby. However, its range is fairly low, making it difficult to get close enough for other survivors to benefit from benefit without also putting them in danger. They have increased the range to 36 meters was 24, and we have reduced the repair speed bonus to 5% was 8%. Honestly, they should have kept the bonus at 8% and then boost the range to 36 and been fine. Granted. And in the situation, you should never be wanting to put your teammates on a gen close by and chase anyway, because that's the situations where they could down you and then go kick the gen. Why would you even do that in the situation in the first place? Because you could be getting chased far away. They'd have to hook you far away and then come all the way to the gen to get to kick the gen. You know what I mean? So keep the bonus high. Honestly, book it to 10%. You're doing a really big risk. You deserve a big reward. So we'll see. Hex Ruin, TLDR, no longer disables when the survivor is killed or sacrificed. Great. I need to know how this will work with the, the general regression events. Because, well, does it mean like if he has Ruin and they get off the gen, do I just run through all eight of my stacks whenever they let go? Or is it just one regression event? We don't know. Um, we'll see. Shadowborn, with the new FOV slaughter being introduced, Shadowborn is now obsolete and needs a new effect. When blinded by any means, gains a 10% haste effect for 10 seconds. DVD is trying to play around with haste status effects. It's clear that they did not learn what made for this. I am a killer though, so I do not care. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, this would be pretty cool. My friend of mine mentioned this when I when I um told her. This would be cool on that Chucky build that I showed you guys, the one that allows you to get stunned in flashlight. This would be cool. But in hindsight, and if you do not use this perk unless it's part of some sort of niche build don't do it because at that point just try your best not to get flashlighted same way with lightborn it's a waste of slot just look at a wall monitor and abuse likewise the fov altering effects of monitor and abuse are now unnecessary considering the added fov slider monitor and abuse allows for some interesting niche play styles as as is so we simply remove the fov adjustment from this perk and let the terror radius effect unchanged cool Ormond gameplay. The newly re renovated Mount Ormond Resort is now open for the season. The update consists of layout changes in front and the back of the lodge, as well as miscellaneous loop adjustments. I'm gonna get to it. The front of the lodge currently has a long row of rocks stretching across it. This can get in the way and make it difficult to traverse the map. Additionally, there is no room in this portion of the map for any windows or pallets, essentially making it a big dead zone. We've gotten, we've given this portion of the map an overall to create more interesting gameplay. Okay, so this rock, okay. So the rocks in front is gone. Or at least it looks like it's gone. Okay, it's not in the front anymore. It's more to the side. This is what it looks like. 
Got these little benches in the front, little little loop right here. The loops usually are right here though. The back of the lodge meanwhile is comprised mostly of picnic tables. Great for enjoying a meal in the freezing cold, but not very impactful when it comes to gameplay. Paddle loops around these tables are fairly short, making them incredibly unsafe. We have similarly adjusted the ace area to improve gameplay. Behavior, you telling me these are the loops supposed to make the gameplay more fun? Y'all just got rid of the tables and then added ski racks. Ain't nothing here. <laughs> Game modifiers, while not being available uh, in the upcoming PTV, our first limited time modifier on Dead by Daylight Lights Out will be available to play in the coming months. Stay tuned for more information. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the very long developer update. Everything we mentioned here will become available in the test on the PTB starting tomorrow. Until next time. All right, so overall, this is a pretty good change. Uh, I have, like I said, I went over it as we got through it. The biggest thing in here is the generator changes, and I'm interested to see how the community reacts to it. Like I said before, I think five seconds on a gen might be a bit too long because you're going to have the situation to where you got to go. Do I go to get save or do I go to the gen? We'll see though. Anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming through the video once again. I love you. And remember, stay spooky. Peace.